I was interested to find out where the lithium we need for car batteries comes from, and I thought you would be too. It made me discover a whole new potentially sustainable source, from seawater itself, worth airing here on Induna, which covers all things about the sea. The world is going electric, demand for electric vehicles is soaring, and with it, the need for lithium-ion batteries. You can get solid lithium metal for about $10 a pound at the moment. Does that sound like much? Well, depending on which source you look at, the global production of lithium is now worth about $40 billion a year, and demands will double in the next two years. But all that lithium is taken from the land, with extraction that is environmentally damaging and concentrated in just a few countries. Australia, Chile and China are the top three. What if we could tap into a virtually limitless source of lithium from the ocean instead? We'll quickly go through the new experimental extraction processes that have been developed, but there's something else coming along that is possibly a game changer and may even make all lithium production unnecessary, and I'll talk about that at the end. The oceans contain over 200 billion metric tons of lithium, 5,000 times more than all land-based sources combined. But there's a catch. Lithium, of course, in seawater exists in very low concentrations. Only about 0.2 parts per million. That's like trying to find a single grain of sand inside a car full of sand. Lithium is funny stuff. It's the next along in the periodic table from the gases hydrogen and helium, but is itself a very reactive metal. It has to be sealed, kept in oiled or inert gas to stop it reacting immediately with air or water. But it's that same reactivity which makes it useful in batteries, as it can store a lot of electrons for very little weight. It's the lightest metal, lighter than aluminium, uh, sorry, the translation of that aluminum in the States. So lithium has what's called a high energy density, very important for efficient electric cars that need lightweight energy. Today, lithium on the land is mainly extracted through two methods, mining from ores and evaporating brine from salt flats. Both processes are environmentally damaging. Ore mining generates huge amounts of waste rock. Brine evaporation happens in big pools with added noxious chemicals and uses vast quantities of water and can contaminate water sources with strong acids and heavy metals. Who knew there were lithium-rich brine pools under salt flats? They're called salars, and drilling is needed to get into them. And then the lithium brine is pumped to the surface and concentrated in giant evaporation pools, which from the air show up as beautiful shades of blue. It takes several months of sunlight to evaporate enough for the lithium to be worth extracting and make it concentrated enough. After treating with various chemicals, a saleable product is produced, mainly lithium carbonate. No pure metal lithium is ever found in nature, it's just too reactive. Then there is also a rock ore, which is called spodumene, made of lithium aluminium silicate, which is a relatively high concentration of lithium, up to about 2%. It's been estimated though that just to make one car battery takes about 12 tonnes of concentrated ore for one car. 20 pounds of pure lithium, or 8 kilograms. And an astonishing 250 tonnes per car of material has to be removed just to get at that ore. So no wonder scientists are working on cleaner and more sustainable ways to extract lithium from seawater. One of the most promising methods uses special materials that selectively absorb lithium ions like a sponge. Perhaps you may remember electrolysis from school science lessons. Well, of course, it has a real practical use too. There's always a liquid involved, which is called an electrolyte, and that sits around two electrodes, the negative and the positive terminals, that are made from specially selected materials, depending on what you're trying to extract. And the whole electric system forces the chemicals out of the solution. One technique for lithium extraction involves a material called lithium iron phosphate, LFP. When an electric current is applied, the LFP acts like a magnet, attracting and trapping lithium ions from the water. The electrolyte that's used is, of course, salt water itself. 
To release the concentrated lithium, the solution is changed and the electric current is reversed, pushing the lithium ions out of the LFP electrode and into a collection chamber. Repeating this process significantly increases the lithium concentration and makes final extraction possible. So, that's a new method of getting lithium out of seawater. Another method is very similar, but uses a special ceramic membrane with ultra-small pores that favour lithium ions and selectively separate lithium from the brine. Scientists at the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, KAUST, that's not so far from Jeddah, have created a similar system using LFP electrodes to extract lithium from Dead Sea brine. These new methods show great promise, but they also have challenges. And of course they're high energy costs. Electrochemical extraction methods need lots of electricity, which can be costly if not sourced from renewables. So if this is going to work on an industrial scale, you may expect to see wind farms on the coast next to the lithium saltwater extraction from the sea. But what if we didn't need lithium for batteries at all? A recent breakthrough could change the entire game. Researchers have developed a new battery using readily available molten sulfur and sodium, which can be extracted more easily from seawater. These molten salt batteries have an incredible four times the storage capacity of lithium iron batteries. Theoretically, it's not been achieved yet. And because sodium is abundant in the sea, of course, these batteries could be produced more cheaply and with less environmental impact than lithium, even if it is taken from seawater itself. So the quest for sustainable lithium extraction from seawater continues, with exciting advances being made every day. I say exciting, it, it's chemistry, but it's stuff that we really need to make our electric cars. But the emergence of new battery technologies, like the molten sulfur battery, could offer even more sustainable solutions, and affordable ones too, as our energy needs and our storage in cars increases. The future of batteries is bright, as they say, and the ocean could hold the key to powering a cleaner and more sustainable world.